Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today, I'm looking at the Cincinnati Bengals and determining what I think they should do with the number five overall pick in the upcoming 2021 NFL Draft. But before getting to that topic, question for those of you viewing, who do you think would win in a fight? Another fight is on the table between Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, probably the top two quarterbacks out of this recent 2020 NFL Draft. Comment down below who wins that fight. But getting to this topic, and also a side note, shout out to Andrew McAllister and Reverse Flash that kind of inspired the idea of this video. But getting into the topic, at number five overall, Cincinnati Bengals will have a good amount of options because it's pretty intended that the top three picks, there's a good chance a quarterback is drafted to, we know Trevor Lawrence is going to the Jaguars. I think there's a 99%, I don't know, that's pretty high odds, but I think there's a good shot the Jets go with Zach Wilson, and I think the Niners, they traded up for a quarterback, they ain't trading up for a receiver and offensive line, they go with the quarterback as well, such as Trey Lance or Justin Fields, and who knows, maybe the Falcons are done on Matt Ryan and they want to go with Justin Fields, so the Bengals have a good chance of having the number one pick at any position outside of quarterback, so there is a lot of options for them to look at, but a lot of us believe the top priority is definitely offensive line. You look at what happened to Joe Burrow last year, without the protection, he went down with a pretty ugly injury. I think he tore his ACL, MCL, he tore a lot of ligaments and just not did not look good. However, and Penny Sewell's coming out as a top tackle. However, the Bengals and a lot of people are very confident in the two tackles that are currently starting in Riley Reif and Jonah Williams, and they believe that Penny Sewell is not needed at number five overall because those two guys will hopefully be healthy and solid. So with that in mind, I still think the Bengals should go offensive line, but because you're so confident the Bengals and their organization is confident in Riley Reif and Jonah Williams, my first pick, you know, just say for the sake of the video and for the Bengals' sake that, you know, the first four picks was a quarterback. Say when Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and then the Bengals do have the number one pick at any position. My opinion is to go Rashawn Slater. Yeah, Penny Sewell might be ranked higher, might be a better prospect, but with the Bengals being satisfied with their tackle position and Rashawn Slater being a known guy that could play any position on the offensive line, one through five, interior, center, tackle, whatever it may be, that is the guy you go with because if you're confident with your tackles, build up that interior line with Rashawn Slater, and you know if one of your tackles go down and get hurt, Rashawn Slater can easily move to the outside and protect Justin or Joe, excuse me, Joe Burrow just as well. So Rashawn Slater is the number one easy pick to me because I just don't want to see what happened to Joe Burrow happen again. But maybe if you address a little more free agency or you have your eye on offensive alignment later in the draft and you want to go with a weapon X receiver or defensive player number five overall, I understand that route also. But to me, Rashawn Slater would just really take this offensive line to the next level. And if you give Joe Burrow the protection, he will make it worth your while no matter who he's throwing the ball to. He will get it to them in pinpoint accuracy. The receiving core is not you know, the best in the league, but it's not the worst in the league by any means either. You do have Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, a pretty good rookie receiver last year, and Autumn Tate, but there's no you know, weapon X, X-factor guy, and that's why if they decide to stick with the offensive line they have and possibly address it in later rounds, and they're looking at a weapon at number five overall, if Kyle Pitts is available, that is the number one guy I'm going with with Joe Burrow. Yes, he had his chemistry with Jamar Chase and LSU, and that's not a bad pick by any means, but if both are available, I'm going with Kyle Pitts. He's six foot six. He ran a four foot six, and he's technically a tight end, but no six foot six dudes run a four fours out here in the NFL. He is just labeled an offensive weapon, in my opinion, and I just think it would take this offense to the next level. The Bengals' tight end position isn't the strongest by any means, and neither is his receiving core. However, Kyle Pitts can affect both of those sides of the receiving position. I just think he will take this offense to the next level and he would be the most electric player in my opinion to go with however jamar chase would not be a bad pick at all you have the wide out you know you're familiar with you know what he could do joe burrow and him have the chemistry and uh it might hurt t higgins and autumn tate and tyler boy because jamar chase might come in and already be the number one guy but t higgins is kind of showing he could be a number one guy so if he is actually your number two you're in a pretty good position of having your receiving core being very solid having Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Auden Tate. And like I said, there's other rounds in the NFL draft. There's seven whole rounds to add as much as you want. I don't think the Bengals are going to be looking at defense at number five overall. They do kind of need it, losing Geno Atkins, Carl Lawson, losing William Jackson. There's still some players. you got Trey Waynes and Von, Von Bell and Jesse Bates in the secondary. So there is some foundation, but the pass rush is desperate, but it's nothing you can fix at number five overall. Number five overall has to go offense, in my opinion, no matter what it is, whether it's 
protecting Joe Burrow and going with the top prospect in Penny Sewell or being satisfied with their tackles and going to the next best guy in protecting Joe Burrow, and that is Rashawn Slater, or going to someone Joe Burrow could throw to, and that is Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase. And I'm just kind of throwing Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase out there. Who knows? Maybe Jalen Waddell or Devontae Smith is the top guy that the Bengals are looking at. I don't know, but to me, Kyle Pitts is definitely the best offensive weapon in this draft. And Jamar Chase, it's arguable if he's the number one receiver, but just him having that chemistry and knowing Joe Burrow personally, being good teammates and friends, at LSU, that would just be the top guy in my opinion on my list. Overall, no matter what the Bengals do at number five, as long as they get Joe Burrow help, like I said, it'll make it worth it worth his while. But even if it does all come to be- together and Joe Burrow has the top protection and has a great receivers, can he be well coached? And Zach Taylor, that will be a big question mark this year. But giving him one more chance or giving him another year to see what he can do, which I'm fond of because he lost his quarterback last year. And his quarterback, even when he was healthy, didn't have a good team around him. So I do want to see if Zach Taylor could properly coach this team when they finally get a little bit going, you know, adding maybe one or two more pieces in free agency, adding a bunch more pieces in NFL draft, give him a real team and see how Zach Taylor can coach. I'm fond of keeping him, on, keeping him, and the Bengals need to realize no matter what they go with this year, Rashawn Slater, Kyle Pitts, no matter what the weapon it is, even if they're the number one prospect in the draft and turn out to be the number one player from the draft, you cannot expect to make the playoffs this year. Just being in that tough division, the AFC North, dealing with the Cleveland Browns, who might have one of, if not the best roster in football, dealing with Lamar Jackson, probably the most electric quarterback on the ground in the NFL, 100% the most electric quarterback on the ground, but really might be the most electric in the NFL. And then Big Ben, he's deteriorating, but it's still a top five, top seven defense Joe Burrow has to deal with. Bengals, you want to see some progress this year. You want to see Joe Burrow get a few more reps, get a few more wins, but do not have high expectations no matter what route they go in this draft. But overall, I love Penny Sewell, but with the Bengals being confident in Riley Reif and Jordan Williams, I think they will go another route and go over Sean Slater and work on that interior line and always know he can move to the outside of the line if he is absolutely needed. Or Kyle Pitts, he would take this level, this offense to the next level and same with Jamar Chase. Overall, Bengals, just make sure you're going on offense at number five overall. Or who knows, entertain the idea of trading back. If there's someone who wants to move up, maybe the Panthers, maybe the Broncos, you know, maybe Washington, maybe the Bears, look at trading back as well. Don't see if you can build some draft capital for the future. There will still be guys available later in the first round if you're looking at moving back. And even if you don't get Pitts or Jamar Chase, there still will be top receivers, Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell. Look up the idea of building up draft capital for the future years. I'm fond of that idea as well. But overall, I think you have a lot to look forward to and just make sure you execute number five overall and don't make any stupid decisions. But comment down below, what do you what do you think you should do at number five overall? And do you think they will trade back? And of course, who wins that fight? Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. For me, Justin Herbert is physically a little bit bigger than Joe Burrow, but I just think Joe Burrow has a different upbringing. I think he's got a little more dog in him, you know, kind of getting thrown around in college, never being, you know, respected as a top guy, you know, leaving Ohio State and then going to LSU and still not being a starter right away. Therefore, I just got to go with Joe Burrow with kind of the better and tougher upbringing, in my opinion. I'm going to go with Joe Burrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Two and a one.